Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And I've been wanting to uh, discuss with you guys about this phenomena uh, that is recorded uh, down in the, uh, oh gosh, near Antarctica, off the coast of Africa, in a very turbulent part of the world, the oceans, etc. there. And so many people weighing in on this uh from different angles, all kinds of ideas and theories, you know, everything from spaceship underneath the ocean uh, to, you know, rogue waves, uh, all kinds of different anomalies, possibilities, asteroid hitting the ocean, etc. And of course, one of the things that is brought up quite frequently then is uh, what happened to the waves? If they're over 80 foot, you would think they have already hit the coastline. Well, that's not always the case either, especially in the case of rogue waves. Rogue waves do just disappear seemingly out of nowhere. And I'm going to share with you a conjecture. And of course, and besides that, there are mainstream media that is reporting that it was a glitch. In fact, the company that offers this software, they say it's a glitch, but yet they don't really know where the glitch is as of yet. But they said they'll find it. They'll find out what the glitch was. And then, of course, what they do is they're collecting data from, from ships. They're collecting data from buoys, things of that nature there. Uh, I kind of find it hard to believe it's a glitch, mainly because as we see the image there, it's going to increase in size. That tells you that more than one buoy or more than one ship is recording the data. But of course, then again, like they say, if that many 80-foot waves were out there, we'd have a lot of ships sunk. Well, not necessarily. 80-foot uh, waves, it, has, it happens. It actually happens more frequently than what people realize. And uh, I do have a theory, though, where I think that could be causing this. And it's only a theory, just a conjecture. It's going to throw in some thoughts out here for you. Uh, I don't know if this is going to play or not. Didn't even try that as of yet, but I want to put this out there. If not, Mr. MBBB3, uh, gosh, his his video, his, his, it's kind of a tongue twister when he does his. Okay, Mr. MBB333, there we go, I got it finally. Uh, he does a nice job on showing the different changes in it. Uh, in fact, let me just play a little bit of his clip there. And I always appreciate his work because he tries to be very balanced in there. He does talk about where they uh, say that it could just be a, a glitch. And then he gives his own thoughts. So let, let me share with you that. Traveling north for a period of 36 hours, implying that there were waves out here above 80 feet consistently, once again, for about a day and a half. Don't know the full details behind what actually occurred here. See the change I took a look size. at it, and what made the most sense to me, other than obviously some sort of a digital glitch, would have been an underwater craft of some sort, obviously quite large, but not necessarily this large right here. Could have been something underwater creating a disturbance that the instrumentation was interpreting large waves. But if, in fact, there were something out there that did generate a lot of waves, it is kind of coincidental that today up here in the northern Atlantic Ocean along the eastern seaboard of the United States, you can see there's flooding being forecasted extending from North Carolina all the way up into lower Massachusetts. And, and of course, the flooding, what he's talking about there would be consistent. Uh, if you look, let me see if I can find where he shows a larger swath there of everything. Uh, you can, can't quite see it there. No, can't quite see it there either. Uh, mainly because the waves would go travel up through there. But then again, you would think you'd have flooding on Africa's coast, etc. All right, now I want to kind of deal with some of the issues about rogue waves and how they work. And as I mentioned to you guys before, my stepfather, uh, Johnny, was an ocean captain. Uh, he actually ran ships. I was taught from an early age how to do that. I've been in some pretty large uh, waves, not nearly as high as what he had been into. He's gone, he's gone through the rogue waves before. He's been in the, the, the ship there traveling through, even in the Gulf of Mexico, where the waves would be 30 foot. I mean, that's just massive. I think the biggest I've ever been in is about 15 foot seas uh, and actually running the ship myself, uh, getting getting my hands wet, so to speak, on how that works there. So I always had a, I never had a fear of the sea. I always loved it. And, uh, 
but I learned a lot over the years. I learned how to run a ship so that you don't end up sinking. You go into the waves there. You make sure that you're going fast enough, especially if you're traveling in the direction of the waves, that, uh, that you don't allow the, the, the wave to swamp the, the, the rear end of the ship. Uh, so uh, you, that, because that can sink you very quickly. Uh, but anyway, with that being said there, there's some, I've, I did some research to find, uh, and we're going to come back to what some of these articles are saying there, but uh, I wanted to share with you just some, th in fact, Physics Girl here, she does a very good job of explaining uh, how rogue waves work, things like that. And when I say rogue waves, I don't believe that this was rogue waves either. And do I think it was a computer glitch? No, I don't. But Nonetheless, whatever caused the waves, what people don't realize, it is an anomaly like rogue waves. So therefore, rogue waves are known to appear and disappear. In fact, before I play her clip there, let me show you that. Uh, I've got it up here somewhere. Let's see. Where do I have it at? Let me find it here. Um, this actually is, I don't know where the article, I must have moved. Okay, I think I put it right. Nope, no, 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 no. Let's, let me just go back and play. Just, it's actually, this would be the quote I would take from that article. I've got it highlighted somewhere on the screen. Without a trace, unlike tsunamis caused by earthquakes, rogue waves are so far unpredictable, localized in space and time, and they are often said to appear from nowhere and disappear without a trace. And that's true. I mean, think about it. Think about all these ships that have ever been sunk or, or nearly capsized by a rogue wave, but yet the rogue wave never makes it to land. Same way, by the way, with a tsunami. Even a tsunami, though it may come from a great distance, by the time, it, let's say, for example, the Canary Islands. If the Canary Islands went down, they talk about the rogue waves coming to the United States. Actually, when we were going through this issue because of the volcanoes going off over there, that, that had become a big issue. And, and one of the things one scientist shared with me, by the time it gets to the United States, though, that, that wave will have dissipated to some degree. But rogue waves can dissipate completely without, can just disappear without a trace. They form and then they're gone. Now, Physics Girl, she actually gives a very interesting insight on that. Let me play that for you. Further, a study by the European Space Agency in 2001 using satellite data found more than 10 high amplitude rogue waves occurring within a three week period. So maybe all those ships of yore that disappeared into thin air were actually sunk by monster waves because rogue waves aren't so rare after all. Why were scientists so wrong? Well, it turns out ocean waves are really complicated, more complicated than just superposition. Imagine trying to explain a human to an alien. Actually, you might start with a stick figure, which is pretty good. You've got the head, torso, and some limbs. What I want to But then show try explaining the circulatory is, system. Here we go, this one yeah. right here. Let in me this back up. Combined crest to crest, the waves double in size. Right, Rogue waves go. could form based on a wave phenomenon known as superposition. When two waves combine crest to crest, the waves double in size, and when they combine trough to crest, they cancel out. So if a bunch of normal waves happen to meet at the right place at the right time, they could create one monster wave. This wave would break with a force of 100 metric tons per square meter. That's like 15 elephants okay, standing on your car. Notice, Needless though, to say, your little boat would not is that the right the crest they cancel out so the if canceling I'm out issue is what i wanted to point out there is because even though the rogue waves because she doesn't talk about that in the theory here but uh but when they do have the waves that come together to create that one rogue wave but then you have the um uh, let me just the superposition the waves double in size and when they combine trough to crest they trough cancel to crest. out there we so go. if a then it then it cancels it out. So could it be that once the rogue wave has already been grown to that size, could it be canceled out because of the trough wave that comes along that causes it to dampen back down? It could be. I mean, these are just theories. They're you know probabilities. We don't really know the answers to all of this there. But um, then you have, uh, for example, uh, this. Uh, here on the New York Post, African weather system generating rumors of UFOs, 80-foot waves blamed on software error. So 
but when you read the article they put in here, alien conspiracy theorists showed up in full force last week after a weather modeling software error showed an anomaly the size of Texas. Uh, do I believe a spacecraft that big were, were in our ocean? No, I don't. Um, you know, even as much as I know about the UFO and alien phenomenon, their underwater uh, civilizations, things like that, I do not believe that they have that big of a craft sitting in our ocean the size of the state of Texas. I mean, could it be possible? Well, sure it could. I mean, have they been sitting on the floor of the ocean down there now for the last, uh, you know, thousand years, and now they decided to up and move the ship around a little bit, or, their, or in this case here, their entire state? Uh, yeah, I guess that is possible, but uh, plausible? I don't think it's plausible. Uh, but anyway, uh, so as you get on into the article here, they, they actually, this is actually mentioned, Mr. MBB333. They mention him in here, so I'm sure that regardless, that'll give him a boost uh, in his in, in people coming to join his channel, uh, and and of course they talk about other channels that talk about this, and uh, and and what caused it. You know, like I said, I was first hearing an asteroid hit the the Antarctica, but I had not had the chance to really look into this yet. So, but they do come out and claim that the software company in the Czech Republic actually says it was caused by a computer software glitch, but they claim they don't know where the glitch actually is. So really, what is it, right? Um, we, don't, we don't know the answer to that. Uh, here's some more information, too, on rogue waves, unifying framework for describing rogue waves. In this uh, article here, oceanography, rogue uh, or freak waves are defined as waves that are abnormally large compared with average waves for a given sea state, with heights exceeding 30 meters. That's almost 90 feet, you know, about, about 85 feet. They're, these statistically rare waves pose severe threats even to larger ships. Unlike tsunamis caused by earthquakes, rogue waves are so far unpredictable and localized in space and time, they are often said to appear from nowhere and disappear without a trace. That was the little clip of the article I was looking for a little bit ago. I couldn't remember where I put it out there. Um, you know, and, and, and of course, we this article here, I forget exactly why I had this one up here. Here we go. Uh, the first scientific measurement of a rogue wave was the 25.6 meter uh, Dropanair drop wave recorded in the North Sea in 1995. 16 suspected rogue waves incidents have been reported in the 21st century. Antarctica's choppy seas and wild winds can cause large waves to self-amplify, resulting in rogue wave frequency scientists had theorized for years but could not yet verify in the ocean, Professor Toffoli said. And, and again, why? They never make it to land. That's another thing. I mean, as and as physics girl says there, and, and quoting one of the science things there, when they were looking at this with satellites, they are very far more frequent than what people ever realize. My my stepdad would talk about rogue waves. Uh, he had he'd been through them. He told me I think at one time he went through one that was like fifty foot uh, estimated fifty foot tall, uh, and that was in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you know, so I can only imagine. But you know, the thing is, is a lot of the times. Even though, like, for example, when you're out in the Gulf and you're in 30-foot seas, that doesn't happen when you get, well, by the time it gets to land. Why, why, when they have such bad weather, are the seas much higher there, but by the time they get to land, they're not. You might, you might be on shore during, a, let's say, for example, during a tropical storm. Deeper water, the waves are always larger as well. The swells are much greater in deeper water. The shallower the water, then they begin to shrink in size. I don't know why that is. It just is. I can take, I, when I went out to the Gulf uh, with a ship one time, when you, it's almost like a line in the water. When you get through that line there, because of the depth of the water, the swells just increase in size. And uh, so that's very typical. And, you know, so, yeah, no, not always are you going to see this stuff come to land. So I don't agree with that. So the question is then is, OK, Steve, what, what's your theory on this? Well, when I get, begin to look at this, one thing that comes to my mind is Antarctica uh, and the pyramids, that being one, or possibly and the Hadron Collider. Hadron Collider, though, not necessarily the one in Switzerland. If you remember, I've said to you before here 
that there are, I think it's like five different Hadron Colliders. There's uh, the one in Switzerland. We have two in the United States that they don't tell you about. They have, and I was told there was one in Antarctica. And so could it be that they're literally causing a portal shift within the oceans, uh, or n even if it's above the ocean, that is causing a, an effect on the ocean? And even the idea of the pyramids. I know they've been trying to bring all these pyramids up online. In Antarctica, they have one as well, as they're wanting to bring them up online. It's something to do with this alien connection. This is why the pyramid in uh, Alaska, uh, Linda Moulton Howe talks about that quite frequently. They've been, they have been working on with entities to bring it online. So I'm gonna play with you a little clip here range from this And other pyramid-shaped formations recently photographed in Antarctica provide evidence of extraterrestrial visitation to our planet in the remote past. And so even in Antarctica, uh, they have found evidence for these pyramids. And so the question is, is, uh, is that what's causing it? I know that they've been, like I said, they've been trying to fire them off. One of the intels that I had on that was that they're working on bringing them all up online. And it has to do with the entities that are going to present themselves to the world. Allegedly, I've been told 2026 was that time frame. Now, whether or not they actually do it in 2026 or not, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. The other one, though, was, uh, oh, sorry about that. The other one is uh, the Hadron Collider. Uh, you know, when you look at the Hadron Collider, that's a, that's another possibility. You know, one of the things that, uh, that back when we were dealing more with DC Intel before, uh, the friend of mine that I had there had to go into early retirement due to medical conditions there. Uh, he would share with me how that, that, uh, they, they were never afraid of Planet X, at least in the Biden administration, because they said they would use the Hadron Collider and create a black hole and swallow it up. Well, the thing is, if the Hadron Collider can create a black hole out in space somewhere, then certainly it could affect the oceans as well in another area. So there's all kinds of technology, and it doesn't mean that we have it or that we're doing it. It could be another country doing it. It could be someone else experimenting. It could be Russia experimenting with it. If you remember, Russia took down that strange instrument down to Antarctica that was discovered up underneath uh, uh, Mecca in Saudi Arabia. Could that be the issue that caused something strange to happen there uh, in the oceans off of Africa, just north of Antarctica? So there are some very interesting possibilities. And I figured I'd just share some thoughts with you out there. I don't think it was a glitch, though. I really don't. Of course, I'd love to tell you it's a glitch. That's a good way to keep that information suppressed. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, don't forget tonight, even though it is a Patreon uh, video that will be up here, I'll be doing a teaching, and, and I'm kind of now divided. I may put this other one directly on Israeli News Live, but I'm going to do one on the law. But tonight I am supposed to do the translation of uh, Daniel 11. I'm looking deeper into that. Not saying I'm translating the entire thing, but I'm looking deeper into that to see if we're missing something. And I actually may have stumbled on something with that as well when it comes to the Jewish doctrine of the two messiahs. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And don't forget, that's at www.stephenbenoon.com. It's how you can come to that live Zoom meeting tonight. God bless you.